So the last speaker of the afternoon will be André Joyal from the University of Quebec, uh, Montréal. And the title will be something about the Jose. <laughs> Well, uh, first I would like to uh, thank the organizer of uh, this uh, colloquium, uh, Gabriel, Catherine, Catherine and Mathieu. Uh, uh, <coughs> this meeting is not uh, exactly uh, the usual kind of meeting where we talk to specialists, uh, because uh, the people participating are coming from many horizons. And uh, I am going to talk about purpose theory uh, in a, I hope, precise manner, but uh, I will not suppose that you are an expert. So I don't know if I will succeed to say something uh, interesting. Uh, there is nothing much new in what I was going to say, but I would like to stress uh, aspects that I feel are important in my uh, work in topo theory. Um, uh, the organizer has uh, saluted a note uh, a week ago uh, on the philosophy of uh, this meeting, and I would like to respect uh, this uh, philosophy. Uh, I'm trying to tell you how I understand purpose theory. Uh, <coughs> maybe I should start with uh, uh, at least a formal definition of what uh, the purpose is. Uh, just uh, for the sake of being uh, complete. Uh, so, uh, recall that uh, uh, a subcategory C uh, of a category E so a full subcategory mm. So can we uh, is reflected reflected with uh, the inclusion functor of C to D uh, has a left hand. Function. Uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> so C uh, is said to be a left exact reflection uh, of, uh, of E. If uh, the function L preserve five minutes. Okay, so that's the definition. Uh, now the uh, definitions of the terms. Of 
diagrams. So you take the category of sets, and you uh, take a small category C, and you take conservative functors from C to Z. And, uh, uh, a tuples is a full is a category which is equivalent to a full subcategory of a category of diagrams of set, but where the reflection functor is a left exact. Okay, so uh, just to uh, properties of the uh, proposals, but uh, one, the category of set is a total. of course uh, can breathe But it does not tell you uh, what topos are. Uh, so there are characterizations, various characterizations were given uh, of uh, what topos are. Um, I don't think I really have the time to give you this characterization. Uh, but that to describe, you have uh, zero uh, axioms. Um, <coughs> and uh, you have no uh, axiom. Maybe I should say something about the theory axiom because what it defines is the notion of an element theory purpose, which is not exactly the same thing, which is more general than the notions of a total C, which is a growth in this purpose. I mean, category theorists have the habit of calling an element theory topos a topos and calling a topos a group of big topos. <coughs> uh, for this talk, I, I would like to call a topos, a group of topos, a topos, and uh, a lovirtian topos, and an elementary topos. Because I think the, the fundamental notion is, is, is that of a group of topos, and it should be called a topos. Uh, okay. So what's the logarithmic the axioms uh, for elementary topos? So, uh, 
This means that E over A as it slides is category close. Of course, uh, it has finite limits. Those, of course, sorry, I should start here. Finite limits. Local recap is close, which means that all the slices is Kevin Bowe. The Kevin Bowe is Kevin is Kevin Bowe, it has finite Kevin product, and the product functor uh, has a, a right adjoint. So, uh, okay, for average. Uh, and uh, three, uh, the existence of <coughs> a, class, a classifying of omega, uh, yes, a classifying subobject omega. So. Uh, uh, classifying means that each time that you have a monomorphism, uh, then it's always a pullback, a, a preserving monomorphism with source the terminal up. So there's always a pullback square, and the map here is unique. So. Okay, so that's the notions that I propose. And what is a purpose in the sense of Grothendieck mm -hmm. is that it's an elementary purpose where the category E is uh, presentable. That's one way to, to say that. So tuples <coughs> elementary equal elementary tuples. Plus uh, locally presentable category. Now, a locally presentable category, this was a notion uh, introduced by Gabriel and Huber. Uh, it says that uh, uh, locally presentable. A nice way to think of, of this is that the same thing as category of models of a limit sketch. Okay, so I will not define what is a limit sketch. This was a notion introduced by the Resman, but uh, a category is locally presentable if and only if it is equivalent to a category of models of a limit sketch. There are other categorizations that are locally presentable. And toposes are exactly elementary toposes that are locally presentable. I'm sorry? You can leave the black hole. Am I? Ah! different view of what proposes. 
So tuples is a uh, tuples. The tuples I, I can't find it now. Uh, is uh, ring. Uh, maybe I should say community. And I put brackets because this is not true, <laughs> <laughs> but morally speaking. And I would like, there's a big analogy be between the theory of community rings and the theory of, of many constructions in total theory. Uh, so let's look a little bit at the way the polynomial ring is constructed. The polynomial ring uh, in one variable is uh, can be constructed in two steps. Uh, you first construct the uh, the the free monoid of one generator. The generator being X, and this is the set of monoda okay now that you have this free monoid of one generator you linearize it you start to take uh, linear combinations of of uh, monoda and uh, this at the end group taking this I'm writing at the moment Z S is the free. Sometimes this is denoted Z S. The free Bosaki notation, I think. The free Abelian group uh, generated by S. Uh, and this Abelian group, as you know very well, has a ring structure. Well, um, Topos is can be constructed the same way. Uh, and I would like to stress this thing. If you, instead of monoids, you replace monoids, replace by categories with finite limits. So the idea is that the uh, um, the um, pullback or finite limits is like a multiplication. This is like multiplication finite limits. Uh, and uh, then you have the linearization process. So uh, here we have to replace z by the category of set. So we know very well, everybody knows that the category of set is a ring with uh, addition and multiplications, co-product of set, I put that. And then, uh, what is ZS? ZS, that set to some category C of, it's, it's pre sheaves on C. The, the inclusion of S into ZS, the uh, canonical inclusion is the unit set to the C top. Uh, this category here is uh, co complete, it has all co limits. So we think of co limits as uh, uh, addition. So in this uh, picture, uh, limits goes to multiplication and uh, co limits to addition. Addition. So uh, this category here, as one well known, is the free uh, completion 
uh, of the category C under co-limits. Uh, sometimes completions under co-limits is called co-completion. Completions under co-limits, co-completion. So if you have E, a category which is complete under co-limits, and, and you have a functor like this, then you can extend it uh, in a co-continuous functor. Uh, so that this uh, diagram commutes up to other morphism. And uh, uh, this F bar is like the linearization of, of the functor F. Uh, and in fact, there is a formula for uh, F bar, which look very much using uh, like a linearization. If I use the formula expression cohen, uh, this is uh, x of c times f of c. Uh, so that's the formula for the extensions at bar. And uh, you see here we uh, are thinking of x of c as uh, x as a vector, the functor x here is a vector, its coefficient is xc, and I am computing this uh, uh, linear combination of, okay. Uh, sorry? Yeah. Can you repeat why the analysis of this three, I mean, this, this, this uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm describing the analogy, and um, I hope to convince you more and more. At the moment, it may not be very convincing. Okay. Uh, if you take so the Grotten group, then we get something like the free and group. I'm sorry. If you can take take the Grotten group, that is something like the free and the group. Yeah, if you assume that uh, in this equation. Uh, yeah. Kind of diagrams, yeah, 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 yeah. But because of the group is related to finite conditions, and I here the coordinates are arbitrary coordinates. So I will not take. Uh, but please uh, make an effort to uh, <laughs> the audience that believe me that the uh, coordinates are like addition and limits. Are and in a topos, in a topos, the product is always distributed over a co product. In a topos, this is always true. If you take the Cartesian product of an object A over the co product, it's always true that it is the co product over A plus BI. Uh, in other words, in a topos, finite limits distribute over co limits. Okay? Uh, that's just a small sample uh, of uh, this phenomena that in a topos, finite limits still over cosmos. Okay, now, okay, so the topos is a community of name. Why just finite? I'm sorry? Why simply finite? Why did you say finite limits? Oh. Why finite? Why finite limits? Uh, rather than uh, all limits, right? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. I uh, would prefer not to try to answer it now, but maybe we can discuss it uh, by the end. Uh, it's true. There is a limits and coordinates are not treated uh, similarly in the total. So, uh, finite limits goes with coordinates, huh? and uh, arbitrary limits. Non-finite limits, uh, you, you all, well, you use them, but they don't play the same role. They, they, okay. Uh, oh, maybe I should also say about morphisms of torpors. Uh, recall that the uh, Rosenzig defined uh, a geometric morphism between two torpors as, as a pair of uh, functors, a left-hand one and a right-hand one. 
Okay? And the left edge right goes into the opposite direction from E to E prime. The assumed morphism is in that direction, but the left edge right goes into the directions. And G, G of the star observed finite limits. It, it's absolutely essential that G of the star should preserve finite limit. Therefore, G of the star preserves its vacation. And G of the star also preserves arbitrary coordinates because it has a right measurement. So, look, the geometric morphism actually is completely determined by this thing here, which is uh, called the inverse image uh, part of the geometric morphism. It goes into the opposite direction, but this one can preserve finite limits and arbitrary coordinates. So, we shouldn't think of it as a renewable morphism because it preserves multiplication in addition. And therefore, there is the category of topos as defined by Groth and Dick, where the morphisms are the geometric morphism. And there is an opposite category, which uh, I will call A top algebraic, the category of toposes and algebraic morphism. And they are opposite. There are two categories, but an algebraic morphism between a topos is like a renewal morphism. It's just a functor like this, which preserves finite limits and arbitrary coordinates. Okay? Um, so it goes into the opposite direction. And so if I succeed to convince you that this is like the category of rings, commutative ring, okay? We see that the opposite of the category of toposes is like a category of rings. So this is something familiar with the, uh, the theory of scheme, that the, the category of geometric object, let's say for example I find scheme, is opposite to uh, the category of commutative rings, okay? Except that now I, I'm treating uh, I want to re regard this as, um, <coughs> as a, a category of ring-like object. Okay, so let's follow the recipe of constructing the polynomial ring with an atropos sense. So, uh, on one side we have Zx, and on the other side we have something called the classifying object topos, set x, right? This is the other topos. So how do we construct that? Well, <coughs> we take the category with finite limits, freely generated by one object. So it turns out the category with finite limits freely generated by one object is very, very simple. You have uh, the object X, which generates the category, and all its power, and the projections between the different powers, the generalized projection. Generalized. It's, this category clearly has product, but it is actually a category with finite limits, and it's a category with finite limits freely generated by, uh, uh, by an object X. It's, it's the opposite of the category of finite set, because a generalized projection is completely determined by what it does on the exponents. So you have two finite sets of one of capability M and the other capability. A generalized projection is defined by a map from M to M. 
Okay, so um, the next step would be to linearize this category, which take, which means taking precedes on, on that. So uh, we take the set, <laughs> set palette of of. Huh? We, we take three sheets on this category with finite limits. Huh? Uh, and of course, that's the category of covariant functor on the category of set. Okay. So, what plays the role of the polynomial ring in one general in Turpel's theory is uh, the category of covariant functor from uh, finite set to set. Well, in this category, if this is really like the polynomial, there should be a, a generic object in it and determinate x. x is the, uh, the forgetful functor, the inclusion from finite set to set. That's the generic object. Okay. Um, <coughs> The next thing is to be able to take quotient. And um, since we know how to construct three toposes, I mean, I just I did it with one object, but I can do this for uh, many objects, even for diagrams, right? I could construct a free topos generated not by a single object, by a category C, or that would be covariant factor from C hat, let's say, uh, so to, okay, where C hat is finite completions of C. Uh, and the finite completions of C has a pretty explicit description uh, which I do not want to discuss here because I want to uh, uh, discuss uh, this uh, topos here. I want to discuss the topos of polynomials in one way. Okay. Now, I make a little break I, in my uh, expose. In a sense, oh, yeah, right. uh, I, I was advised not to use this blackboard because uh, then I it's the last one, so I will take the other one down. <laughs> You have to use it in the last minute. <laughs> okay, that's high enough. Okay, now this one I can erase. Uh, yeah, now I want to come to logic. Uh, I don't know how many of you can reach me. Uh, logic is not really difficult, but <coughs> uh, I, will, I will give you a crash course in logic. <laughs> uh, okay, so there are two levels of logic. First, propositional logic. Proposition. Something called propositional logic. Uh, it's uh, you have so-called proposition, and you can do conjunction, disjunction, negation, and there are rules and boolean. 
is all summed up by Bode and algebra. So you don't need to learn proportional logic if you know what the Bode and algebra is. Okay. The other is predicate but Okay. So in predicate logic, in addition, you have variable you have uh, these uh, logical connective and you have quantifier uh, that you can apply to uh, predicate to form new formulas and there are rules. Okay. What is this? I mean, from a purely algebraic viewpoint, what is it? I mean, here we have the simple uh, answer. But what is predicate logic from the point of view of algebra? Okay, so I will try to describe that quickly. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, provisional logic is, is really imitating the power set of the set, Px, this is the set of sets. So the power set of the set is, um, is a good algebra, at least in classical logic. But what is, what happened with predicate logic? Well, with predicate logic, you get a sequence of Boolean algebra. And uh, there would be operations in between. So, what is it? Uh, well, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, substitution along projection. For example, if I have a projection P1, uh, then I can use this projection to do various things. For example, I can take a subset in X and uh, take P1 minus 1 of S, which is in X2. This is substitution. Or I could take a, a subset, uh, uh, let's say A in X square, and um, I would uh, take its image, P1 of A, which is projection, which is in X. So there are uh, uh, two more operations in uh, predict logic: uh, uh, substitution, inverse image along projections, and data image. And if we can describe the, the rules, the laws governing these operations, we know what predicate logic is. Uh, sorry, I'm um, from what is what is x in this uh, set? Uh, x is an arbitrary set. You see, the notion of Boolean algebra is based on the idea that if you take an arbitrary set, the power set of X uh, has a certain algebraic structure. It's called Boolean algebra. Uh, yes, but in that case, uh, for example, in the case of propositional logic, uh, you can take the set uh, with the cardinality of all the propositions that you're considering. Uh, at the moment, I'm just looking at, uh, forget about topos theory, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's no. just uh, that. Uh, uh, I associate to a set a sequence of Boolean algebra, but there will be operations between between these. So, for example, there is an operation here, which is p1 minus one inverse image. I give you an example inverse image. It takes a subset of one generator, and I okay, and I have another operation in the other side, which is the direct image, which I could write. Like this, if you want to call it. So, this is maybe a notation. Okay. So, I have all these operations. And what are the rules? I mean, that's very simple. Okay. So, first, a definition. Uh, let me say that uh, an homomorphism of Boolean algebra. And homomorphism uh, 
is open. Uh, if it has a left element, I mean a left, a Boolean algebra after all is a is a coset, so it makes sense to talk about uh, algebraic because. And homomorphisms of Boolean algebra will preserve the order of relation that you have on the elements of the Boolean algebra. And um, uh, to have a left hand point is, is like a technical theory. It should map uh, the other direction with the other, with the property that phi uh, on graph of x is more than r, if and over if. X is smaller than a T one star. So maybe T. But okay, that's the uh, the family property of the left angle. And if, if a map uh, between two poles set has a left angle one, this left angle one is unique. So uh, this is a property, it, and I call it open because with strong duality. Uh, and the homomorphism of one large graph has gone to a continuous map between stone spaces. Now, if this uh, continuous map is an open map, if it takes an open uh, subset to an open subset, then uh, the homomorphism would have a left hand one and conversely. So this condition really refers to the stone duality. So I call it open. Okay. And here we see that uh, this homomorphism here is open because it has a left out one. Okay. Now I describe the algebraic structure uh, that lives on this sequence. Okay, what you have is a covariant functor, uh, uh, let me call it B, from the category of finite set. to the category of Boolean algebra. Okay. So if you like, Bn is P of x to the power n. Okay. So that's the definition. Okay, so we have that. And the second shows is that Bf is covariant. This functor is covariant because it's the compositions of two contravariant functors. So it's, a, it's covariant. Uh, second is that uh, Bf from Bm to Bn is open for every n. So this map is open. So you can, uh, algebraically, it makes sense. You can actually uh, specify this by exhibiting a map the other way, which uh, I will write B star F. OK, so the map the other way is the left side one. OK, and then we have the back Schroeder condition. And what the Beck Chevalier condition is saying here is um, that uh, if you have a push out square um, of uh, of an axis. <laughs> Then you can uh, uh, construct a square B 
Bn prime, uh, Bf prime. This is vertically, I'm putting the left and right. And horizontally, I'm putting the homomorphism U and B. Uh, that the picture of the condition is saying that uh, for every push up square, this is a pullback, a uh, community square. Not a pullback, but a community square. And that's it. That's what uh, um, first order uh, logic is about. It, it's about studying uh, these uh, functors having, having this property. And there is nothing more in the first order logic sorry. than that. I'm sorry. Uh, could you make a more direct translation? I'm sorry? Could you make a, a more direct translation between this and logic? For example, how do you transform like a problem of quantifiers? Uh, that, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, I, would, I would not do that. Okay, I will not do that here. I want you to believe me, but I will write notes where I will give some details. Okay. 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 But it's exactly like we could say the Boolean algebra, the theory of Boolean algebra, the theory of Boolean algebra, uh, capture completely propositional logic, classical propositional logic. I think that, that the theory of these things capture completely uh, the. Okay. So this should be called. It was called the cylindrical algebra by. by, by uh, I'm sorry? This was called a task, well, by task. And oh, lindenbaum tarski lindenbaum tarski algebra. This is uh, a form of lindenbaum tarski algebra. This is equivalent to uh, lindenbaum tarski algebra. I think it's called maybe cylindric algebra, etc. Um, so there is nothing, in some sense, much new, except that Tarski would not use functors. Huh? And uh, so the presentation is, is sort of different, okay? But it's equivalent to task even though well. Okay, now, um, uh, a morphism, there's a category of these. Uh, a, a morphism of theories. It is uh, is a natural conformation. Let's say R, natural conformation between two 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 functors with values in Boolean algebra, uh, but it should satisfy one extra uh, condition. It's not just a simple natural conformation. There should be something about what happened when you, you take uh, the left hand right. So, um, so if you have a map from M to N, F, it, it gives rise to a map in the other direction uh, using the left edge point. Um, now you have the natural conformation here, which you can describe. Is um, B a point M? Uh, B point okay. So you want this uh, square to produce in addition to the usual square. In other words, the map phi N, the map phi N, the map should be in a transformation for. Uh, uh, the, the functors that you get in the other, the other directions when you use the left hand one. So not only a natural from from B to B prime using the usual homomorphism, but it's also the left hand. Okay. Now, uh, an example of such theory is this. Given a set, you have uh, naturally. Uh, theory which I call Px. Okay. And a model of 
of B mobile in set is an homomorphism in this sense into Tx. Okay, so there's a notion of models. That's a classical notion of model for the first order theory. Okay, now what, what's the connection with tuple theory? Uh, in tuple theory, um, Px uh, is not the Boolean algebra. Px is a frame. So if x is an object in a topos, if you look at the lattice of some objects of the topos, uh, what you have is what people call a frame. <coughs> so a frame is a complete lattice uh, where the infima distribute over the suprema. Uh, and there is a notion of morphism, a frame. So if you have two, two frames, L and L prime, then a morphism of a frame is, uh, should preserve uh, enfima, a finite enfima, and uh, arbitrary suprema. That's the definition of a morphism of a frame. So, uh, and then examples of that is that if you have a map from x to y in the topos, then uh, if you take the inverse image of a subject of y in the topos, uh, you get a map in the other direction, x minus one, and this is a morphism of frame in this sense. It preserves finite intersections and arbitrarily a supremum. <coughs> so, what is then to generalize the notions of Boolean value theory? Oh, okay, thank you. between frames. Okay, so if I have uh, a map between two frames, I, I need to define what is an open map. And it would be a bit more complicated than just saying it's a left adjoint, uh, because it would have uh, open uh, if there exists a left adjoint Star. That was the best uh, plus, uh, and you want to have a projection formula. And the projection formula is saying that uh, if I take phi rubber streak of x, and I intersect it with y, it's the same thing as <coughs> phi lower three of x intersection phi of y. That's the well-known formula in that by geometry projection formula. And <coughs> this defines the notions of open maps of frame. And um, the rest of the definition of a geometric theory uh, will be the same. So uh, it will be 
the Kuvay and Tonka and find uh, two frames to the category of frames, not Boolean algebra to the category of frames. Uh, 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 F is open for F. And uh, back to that. condition. So that's how you can define a geometric theory. Uh, a geometric theory, can, uh, there are aspects that can be infinitary in a geometric theory. You, you can do a conjecture like this, for example. You could say something like that. Given a, a, a family of, of predicate, you can do the uh, infinite conjunction. I have never succeeded to know which one is it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, there is a notion of a finite theory, a geometric theory, right? You replace frames by the symmetric lattices rather than just uh, general frames. You take the symmetric lattice and you have the same axis. So, there is a finite theory version of, uh, of what a geometric theory is. Okay. Um, okay. There's a category of geometric theories. What is that? And yeah, yeah. What is that? Well, observe that a friend is a covariant functor from set F to set, after all. So the frame is actually made it live in, the, in this topic. I mean, the theory. The theory is actually an object, because remember that this is the category of covariance of that. And if you unfold the structure of this geometric theory, you discover, it's not difficult, that um, L is a frame in the surface. And there is nothing more. Uh, the notion of frame, which I have defined in set, can be internalized actually in a little box. There is a notion of frame, and for this you need an elementary box. To explain what a frame is, you need power set. Because <coughs> um, uh, you get involved with infinitary operations inside the tuples, and you need the power set. So this, the fact that this is an elementary tuples makes possible to define what is an internal frame in there. And it is what you think. It is. Uh, it would be a, a partially open set, it would be a poor set. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, co-complete. Uh, you follow, you just, <coughs> and where the uh, infimum will be symmetry with respect to the supremacy. You write this down and you discover it's a geometric theory. It's just the same. Uh, now, I don't know if this uh, has consequence for logic, but what it says is that uh, uh, the category of uh, geometric theories is the same as the category of frame in this, in this purpose. And a frame Opposite is what people call local. <coughs> uh, a local is a formal notion of a topological space, and the opposite of the category of frames is, uh, at this uh, extent, this the category of local, there's a functor here. Each local 
has uh, a space of points, and uh, there is a conjunction between the two. This we could call that a spectrum of the car. Okay. So uh, I mean, there are people who make a living, mathematicians, of uh, doing topology with locales. And they have very interesting results in there. They study locales, insects. And, but it's, what it seems is that if you move up this theory of locales in set, and you look at spaces in this topos, you're studying uh, the geometric theories, you're studying first order logic, and etc. I don't know what the uh, conclusions for that are. Uh, maybe. One thing is the theory of classifying topos, for example, given a geometric theory, you can construct its classifying topos. Well, that's very straightforward to do here. Uh, and uh, to obtain theorems about classifying topos, it becomes also very straightforward. Uh, OK, I guess I should start. Yeah, uh, this this was a part of uh, of my talk. I I wanted to yeah I, I didn't said said nothing. Why is it called a topos, right? Because it, it's a very good question. Uh, topos should be an extension of the notions of topological space. And if you look at in the SGA four, uh, the author of SGA four, you went to lose the notion of topos. They really believe that's an extension of topology. Now, in which sense a topos is like a generalized space? It's because a topos has points. It has points. Uh, a topos may not have one. I mean, there are. But normally, topos have plenty of points. And uh, the, the, the totality of points of a topos form a category. Instead of being uh, a set, you don't have a set of points. You have a category of points. So. Uh, so, <coughs> I think it's the main, uh, one of the main aspects of topos theory is that you, the collections of points of a topos now form a category. And the topos is, is putting a topology on this category. A topology in some generalized sense. So maybe I should give you an example. Uh, <coughs> the uh, category of groups, is, is the category of points of a certain topos. This is called classifying topos for groups. The, the category of all groups is the category of points of a certain topos. And now, what, 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 what is the topology there? Uh, the topology comes from the fact that uh, every group uh, can be expressed as a co-limit of finitely presented group. You see, if you take uh, uh, a group, a general group, you can approximate it by a finitely presented group. And there's a coded process there. And uh, that's where the topology comes from. Uh, so categories very often have a natural topology that comes from the fact that uh, infinite structure can be approximated by a finite one. And uh, this is uh, what uh, Topos is doing. Yeah. Thank you. But, uh, I wonder how would your, what you presented relates to what we are high productions. The same. And actually, this question has also some historical interest because yeah. actually, yeah. Lavia invented high productions before it came out. Yeah, I, I should mention that, uh, of course, uh, this notion of geometric theory that I present is a special case of high yeah. yeah. But uh, the question is are there any. Because uh, like he invented, I think, two years before he, he published his paper in Nice on uh, elementary topos. So, high production is earlier. And then, of course, right, you, you, you can how say, understand high production through topos. But I just wonder, could be some other models or something other than the topos? Uh, I don't know. Yeah.
this is a half question. Suppose our great grandchildren are taught topos theory when they are when they are babies. Okay? How can one justify geometric morphisms? They don't preserve our object, they don't preserve anything or very little. So what justification is there? One would think of logical morphism. Yeah. And they are yeah, they want it, of course. But why geometric morphism? Yeah, of course they arise from geometry. But yeah, yeah. They have not learned geometry before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, of course, uh, this is a very apocryphal. <laughs> uh, but again, uh, trying to justify uh, geometric morphism independently of just putting, pushing the definition, right? Uh, uh, what happened is this. Uh, I will make an analogy with the theory of frames or locales. Uh, okay. So, if you take the category of topological spaces, then <coughs> there are many duality, that duality theorem about topological spaces. For example, get from duality. Okay? And uh, uh, again, from duality can be explained by saying that, or maybe a version of get from duality, is that you take uh, the interval, say one, and all its power. So uh, I take zero one to the S, all its power, and I build a, 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 a and that's right to be in the sense of Rodier by looking at continuous maps between uh, powers of, of the interval 0, 1. I get the number by 2. And you can prove that the models of this uh, by 2 are exactly the compact spaces. In other words, uh, if I take a compact space, then I can come take continuous map from the compact space into 0, one and the, the continuous function from k to zero one and this is a model of this theory. Okay, so that essentially can from the value, but it does not use C star algebra. I answer. Okay, but instead of uh, zero one, you can take a Sierpinski space. Uh, where the topology. The topology of the sequence of space is you have this uh, one and zero one. So it is a, it's a partial order of topology. So the uh, point one is open, uh, but uh, the point zero is, is closed. So it's not open. And uh, it's well known that uh, uh, open, if you have an open subset of the space, uh, then the characteristic map of the open set uh, is a continuous map into the Sierpinski space and conversely. In other words, the Sierpinski space represents uh, open subset. Now, we can build a theory using the Sierpinski space. That's just the eye. You take powers. In, in top, in the kind of topological space, you take powers of the Sierpinski space and continuous maps between them. Okay? That's a theory, like this one. And you look, can look at models of this theory. And the models are, are not obtained this way. The models are all count. Are, are frames. So, we see that the notions of a frame, the abstract notions of a frame, can be extracted from uh, this theory. It's a, the category of frame is the category of models of this theory. Okay, so now the same thing happened with the toposes. So, uh, uh, you, instead of the sequence of space, you take the category of set. So you're doing the sequence space with the one with the category of set. 
And instead of taking power like this with the screen set, you take uh, <coughs> power like that. And now, what are the continuous functors? The continuous functors because you need the operations, you see. Here the operations were selected by putting a continuity condition. So what are the operations that you should put here? And, and this is about functors that preserve directed correlates. Directed correlates. In other words, diagrams can be approximated by finitely presented diagram. And if you uh, consider only functors that preserve directed collimates, you get a theory. You get a theory, and the models are grossly typical. Exactly like here, the models are frames. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, the models are of the form continuous map from a growth of interpos to, to, to set. So, this is. The, the, the pre sheaf or the sheaves of the growth of interpos are the continuous functors from X to set. In continuity in the term of preserving direct coordinates. You are I, I'm not sure if it <laughs> maybe it doesn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It may not answer your question. To be genius. I'm sorry? That's one point. And the second point is that for elementary topos, yes. to always yeah. break down, and yet the morphisms are the geometric morphisms. Why? Good question. That, that's a good question. Uh, for example, take uh, locales or frames. Frames. Okay. Frames are a hiking algebra. Yeah, I know. Okay. But the morphism between hiding algebra, what are they? They they normally they are not the geometric morphism, but they are hiding algebra morphism. In other words, geometry dominates here. The the uh, logical aspect of topos theory is very important, but it's not preserved by geometric morphism. And sorry for logic, but it is not preserved by geometric morphism. But it is very useful. But, very useful. But geometric <coughs> morphisms can be explained by the notion of fiber category. Elementary notion of fiber. Okay, maybe uh, you tell me. Yeah. <coughs> well, thank you.